Minister, I appear with Mr. Emmanuel Bitter and Radhi Karora for the Attorney General. From the outside, outset, I would wish to state that uh, the Attorney General has been named as a respondent in petitions number E002, 003, and 007. He has uh, filed a notice of intention not to oppose any of the petition in which he is joined as a party, pursuant to Rule 11.2 of the Supreme Court Election Petition Rules 2017, and uh, would wish to declare that the Attorney General is completely neutral on the dispute before this Honorable Court. The Attorney General nevertheless wishes to address this Honorable Court on two issues. The first of the issues are very grave allegations against some members of the National Security Advisory Council by the chairman of IEBC on grounds that they visited the Tallinn Center on 15th August 22, from which certain allegations have been made which I'll come to. The second ground I will address this honorable court on is as a matter of public interest on the issue you have raised on issue number six, which is the interpretation of Article 138.3 and 10. Chief Justice, the court, the NSC is the body in charge of our security. It is part of the executive and is established for the benefit of all Kenyans. It doesn't have political identity or political intention. Its members comprise those at the top echelon of our civil service and security infrastructure and it is a body which in any organization of extensive public interest gets involved to try and see how it can assist on matters of security. The chairman of IABC, Mr. Wafula Chebukati, has purported to present before this honorable court that uh, he has neither the knowledge nor connection with NSC. NSAC. The record establishes otherwise. Indeed, from Mr. Kenyon's affidavit sworn on 28th October 2022, it is clearly shown that on 4th July 2022, the chairman was in attendance of a meeting of NSAC and brief the NSC on the status of the preparation of general election and sought to involve it fully on matters of security, both in context of uh, ongoing activities and also to help them from time to time. I would like to refer you to page 13, 31 of Mr. Kenya's affidavit and next to the notice of application, which was notice of motion, which was filed before this court uh, to get the context. At page 31, you start from page 29, and there it is shown the remarks which the chairman, Mr. Chebukati, made to NSIC. And uh, then he went on, out to outline the full infrastructure of what will happen at the elections, agreed on the assistance which was required, and at the end of the meeting at page 31, NSSC reassured IBC that it will offer necessary support to ensure successful conduct of general election and achieve his constitutional duty. Members also pointed out the success, that successful results transmission was critical 
and the issue of budgetary concern by IEBC should not arise, and indeed agree to assist IEBC on any budgetary requirements for purposes of transmission. And it is from there that uh, the relationship continued. You will also notice that uh, the visit to the uh, IEBC Tallinn Center was instigated as, uh, as a result of uh, the activities which had gone on on 13th and 14th when there was suspension of transmission and display of the result. And without explanation from the IEBC. As deponed by Kenya, he called the chairman and advised him that the NSC has intention to send a team to meet him and his fellow commissioners for purposes of discussing the security and implication uh, of, of concerns surrounding transmission, tallying, verification, and declaration of results. The chairman posits that uh, he was early in the morning when you go through his affidavit, visited by a number of individuals, some of whom comprised politicians, and some of whom were various eminent persons in the country, and uh, that their intention was not to enhance the credibility of what he, he was doing. But he, he tries to conflate this with the visit of the NCSE NCAC by saying, connecting it to what had happened at night, that further, that at 10 a.m. in the morning he was informed by Professor Goulier that the team from NLCA had arrived at the Tulling Center, and he later learned that they had proceeded to the office of Deputy Inspector General of Police. Nothing could have been true uh, than the fact that he was rung by Mr. Kenua, who told him that because of security concern and tension which was arising in the country, arising out of non-transmission, and of course we have had an, uh, 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 an example on this in previous election, he was sending a team to go and visit him and discuss the issue of security. That notwithstanding, the chairman pretends that this was an issue which he only came to know when he was informed by Professor Gullier. But immediately thereafter, he concedes that uh, he was rung by Mr. Kenua, but pretends that the call was by Mr. Kenua to tell him that the team was coming to discuss the succession procedure, which is a matter which to his knowledge, neither him nor NS, N, 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 CSC are involved. The chairman then adopts confess and avoid posture to discredit the mission by conceding that Kenua indeed called him but to discuss assumption of office. We know that assumption of office is a, a process which is statutory and members of that office had been appointed and are known and are not members of NSAC or persons who went to see him. Uh, further, it couldn't have been stated in the midst of ongoing tension that uh, the NSAC NSAC is sending a delegation to discuss assumption of office when the whole country was waiting and tensions were rising and in fact there was almost a breakdown at Bomas as these things were going on. The mission was led by Kennedy Kihara who was the only person who addressed the chairman. The other members didn't speak and the other commissioners of the, I, I, the, the, the other commissioners of IBC of, of uh, of NCSAC, Mr. Kennedy Kihara, and Mr. Sorry. The mission was led by Kennedy Kihara, who was the only person who addressed the chairman. 
and the other commissioners of IBC. Mr. Kennedy Kiara, in his affidavit sworn on 28th February 2022, equally confirms that his old presentation was to express the need to expedite the process of de declaring the results and ensuring transparency in order to avert public anxiety. But the attitude of the chairman is exhibited by the contempt by which he treated this team. They were not met when they came. They managed to find where to wait, but they were kept waiting for four hours. Members of a security team in the midst of an election where tension was rising. Having led them, the chairman claims that Mr. Kiara proceeded to caution him, among others, that if IEBC declared the results, uh, the results with Honorable Ruto as the president-elect, chaos would erupt, and that the blood of dead Kenyans will be in their hands. But at this time, they were meeting not in the presence of Mr. Kiara and the chairman. They were all contingent of commissioners and the team from the security who comprised four other people. And he is trying to allege that an executive, a top executive of government would have gone and made this declaration in the presence of all these people. This claim is, of course, denied. Mr. Kenya, as you know, is a top civil servant, is a top professional. And we all know that in civil service, discretion is the promise of valor. I mean, in fact, they are so discreet that even in normal thing, they would not dare have the public know it. Curiously, the chairman reported the events which, unvolt, uh, which unfolded at the Tulling Center on 15th August to the police and they failed both an OB and also made a statement. There was no mention at all of this heinous act. There's also not any mention of the visit in any of the numerous statements the chairman made. As is common in the divided house of IEBC, the chairman was supported by two commissioners who incidentally also went to the police and made their statements, and both also failed an OB, no mention of this incident. On the other hand, the four dissenting commissioners have filed an affidavit dated 28th August, which confirms on behalf of herself and three others that the meeting indeed took place and what was discussed was issues of security, as was indicated by Mr. Kiara. The allegations made by the chairman are extremely grave and have irretri irretrievably sullied the conduct of the official concerned, and indeed, if proven, can constitute an offense under Section 12 of the Election Act. The court views such allegations with great gravity. It has been the position of this honorable court that where an election offense is alleged, the evidence should be clear, cogent, certain, and the proof of, of, of which the law commands to be beyond reasonable doubt. It cannot be based on allegation on one side, on a team which is known to be divided, each part supporting his position, and on allegations of the chairman without any further proof when he had had an opportunity to indicate what happened and failed to do so. In the result, it is my humble submission that the allegation made cannot fly. All the chairman is doing is, uh, is uh, selling the character of other people to augment his claim for higher principle and integrity. And at the end of it, nothing comes out of the allegation. Indeed, after that, they went, proceeded, 
considered the results which were not ready as at the time this team was there, and announced the result he wanted to announce. Suffice it to say that this team having met them and being satisfied that uh, the results were being declared, made a statement to the whole country telling them to keep in peace and that all things were okay. And you will find that statement made on 16th in the affidavit of Mr. Kenyua. The next issue the Attorney General wishes to address is framed as issue number six, and that is direction of this honorable court on queries whether IBC carried out verification, declare, uh, verification telling and declaration of us in accordance with Article 138.3c and Article 138.10 of the Constitution. It is the contention of the Attorney General that the interpretation of the said article is a matter of public interest without going to the application of the article to the dispute before you. The parties have made submissions in connection with the above matter and will not try to take your time by repeating submissions already on record. In this respect, I adopt fully the submissions by Attorney General dated 28th, August 2022. The starting point, however, are the two provisions which on the face of it have no ambiguity. They are clear and unambiguous. The commission is established under Article 88 of the Constitution Article, Article 250 provides its composition as consisting of at least three, but not less more than uh, nine members. Article 253 establishes the composition of each of uh, the independent commission. And Article 250 53 provides its incorporation. Now, there has been uh, interpretation both by this court and by the Court of Appeal as to what Article 138 it means. And in that respect, I would like to refer you to the case of Raila versus Electoral Commission, and that is the second petition of 2007, and at page 153, it is, uh, starts at page 153. At page 153, this honorable court referred to the case of Maina Kiai, and uh, in it, it stated as follows. Clearly, at paragraph 263, clearly this provision in mind, the Court of Appeal in Maya Kai decision was categorical as it rendered itself. Thus, we are satisfied that this elaborate system, the electronic transmission of the already tabulated results from the polling station contained in a prescribed form is a critical way of safeguarding the accuracy of the outcome of elections. I do not see how the appellant or any of its officers can vary or even purport to vary, verify those results. Further, the Court of Appeal stated thus, and this is the important one, the appellant, as opposed to his chairperson, upon receipt of prescribed forms containing tabulated results for election of the president electronically, transmitted to it from the near 40,000 polling station, is required to tally and verify the results. The appellant, as opposed to its chairman. Later in the ruling, the court stated that it was further argued, that is paragraph 293, it was further argued in court by a number of counsel for the first and second resume that, the disregard, that disregarding from 34A is and exclusive relying on from 34B, many of whose authenticity will later be called into question in the telling process. The said resume was simply complying with the court of appeal in Maina Kiai. We have already held that we find little or nothing in this decision to suggest that by deciding the way it did, the appellate court restrained or barred first respondent from verifying the results from the, or, or, before declaring them, or that was re, uh, relieving the former from statutory duty of electronically transmitting the result. What the second respondent was barred from doing by the Court of Appeal and the High Court 
was to vary, alter, or change the results relayed to National Tallying Center from the polling stations and constituency tallying center under the guise of verifying. So here, when they say what the second respondent was barred from doing, they are referring to the chairman. And it seems to imply that the verification ought to be done by the chairman, whereas the court also quoted with approval the finding in Maena Kiai uh, to the extent that the appellant as opposed to his chairperson upon the receipt of prescribed form containing tabulated results of election of president electronically uh, transmitted is required to tally and verify them. The Maena Kiai decision is expressly clear on the issue and it states at page, I think it is page 104 of our list of authorities, authority number three, in Attorney General's Case Digest and Bundle of Authorities, page 67 to 107. He says that we hold further that reference to the appellant in sub-article 3C is not to be construed to mean the chairperson, but rather the returning officers who are mandated after counting the votes in the polling station to tally and verify the count and declare the result. The appellant as opposed to its chairperson upon receipt, the appellant as opposed to its chairperson upon receipt of prescribed form containing tabulated results of the, ele of the election of president electronically transmitted to it from the near 40,000 station is required to tally and verify the results received at the National Tallying Center without interfering with the figures and details process, uh, detail process. In Article 138.10, the chairperson then declares the result of the presidential election and delivers a written notification of the result to the Chief Justice and to the incumbent president. That is now circumscribed and narrow the role of chairperson of the appellant. So it is clear from that, that according to Maina Kiai, the role of the chairman was to declare the results. And the role of uh, the IEBC was to tally and verify. And that is indeed consistent with the expectation of Article 10, our na national principles and national values. So we humbly request this court to take this opportunity to clarify uh, the position without, I, I think we need to emphasize, and based on what Justice Lena Ola was raising yesterday, the issue of prospectivity and retrospectivity. We're not going to that as the Office of the Attorney General. The Office of the Attorney General want a clarification of this provision for future election and on how it impacts on other commissions. Is executive role conferred on the chairman or the chairman is part of the commission and can only act in community with the commission? And that is consistent also with uh, the provisions uh, of the amendments which were done, some of the amendments which were done in 2017, uh, you will notice that uh, the commission has uh, clearly delegated functions to the returning officers. Uh, section 391A, that deals with National Assembly and County Assembly for them to tally uh, and, uh, uh, and, and verify and declare and 391B deals with the right of the returning officers to tally, verify, and declare the governor, senator, and county women assemblies. But the provision purported to confer the right on the chairman to deal with presidential elections, and that Maina Kiai was very categorical that it was contrary to the provision of the constitution. And this is what they said. They said that uh, 
The controversial regulations 83.2 and 87.2 were not affected by amendments and the object is not difficult to see. The High Court having found those regulations, that's at page 105, to be inconsistent with the Constitution, it was in bad faith for the appellant to reenact them while pursuing this appeal. It is our firm position that the purpose for which section 39, 2, and 3 of the Act and Regulations 83, 2, and 87, 2 C were pro promulgated or made have the effect of infringing constitutional principles of transparency, impartiality, neutrality, efficiency, accuracy, and accountability. So that was the position of Maina Kiai. Maina Kiai came to this court. The appeal didn't succeed, and therefore it has impl impliedly been confirmed by this court. So we humbly uh, request your lordships to take this opportunity and, and my ladies to take this opportunity to clarify that position. To go back in conclusion to the members of the NSAC, Lord, I would like to humbly submit that these are Kenyans of integrity, highly professional, who have pulled that themselves with their bootstraps and reached the echelon of our system and it would be very unfortunate when it, w it is left for their name to be sullied in the midst of a political context in which they have no interest. In fact, they were merely asked by the NSAC to send a message. A spokesman was appointed who went and sent the message, but they are now being tied with the brush of having been trying to unconstitutionally alter a process which is sacrosanct and which they have sworn by their oath to protect in assuming their position. That's my humble submission, and I will donate the three minutes to the court. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the three minutes and 16 